by the end of this video, you should be able to understand this sentence. あの、すごく雑な言い方しますけど、暇だから恋愛してるやついっぱいいます。うん Like with any Japanese sentence, the first thing we need to know in order to understand it is the context. A few days ago, I posted a video called Ugly Feelings in Japanese, and that was、uh, an excerpt from a call into a radio show about how this girl was feeling like all her friends and things were getting partners, and she was looking at them on social media and feeling jealous and feeling like she's never gonna find. A person that she can be with and be in a, a relationship with. And then this sentence that we just heard a second ago. Is pulled from the radio show host's answer to that person.、Uh, let's break it down. First, here's the whole sentence.、Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get back to why I said hito by accident there. But okay, so. <laughs> okay. okay. I translated it as、um, this isn't a very nice way to put it, but a lot of people are only in relationships because they have nothing better to do. When I first heard this sentence, I thought it was really interesting the way that the speaker prefaces what they're going to say with the reason being is that I just I wouldn't have thought to say that personally before a sentence that is kind of improper or rude. Okay, not rude, but improper. So, ano is um or uh. It's like something you say before when you're hesitating to say something. Sugoku is extremely or very.、Uh, zatsuna is like rough, crude, or messy. I'm coming back to that one in a second. Ikata is way of saying. Shimas is do. Kedo is but. Hima is free time or not being busy. Takara is because. Denai is love or intimacy. Shiteru is doing. Yatsu is person. Is a lot and imas is there are. So, if you've been studying Japanese for a while, there's a good chance that you've heard the word fukuzatsu, which means complicated or complex. That's got the same zatsu in it right here. And if we look at the kanji, it's like fuku is like duplicate or multiple, and then zatsu is miscellaneous, rough, crude. And then ikata is、so、a way of saying that's because you take、um, you, which is to say. And then you do imas is say, like that's the mas form, but we want the mas stem. And then you add kata, which means like way or direction, literally. And that becomes ikata, which is way of saying. You can, do, you can put lots of verbs before kata to say way of doing something. Shimas is do. So I had a hard time translating this. So, zatsuna ikata shimasu kido. At first, I was saying, I tried to write something like,、um, this is a really rude way to put this, but a lot of people are blah, blah, blah. And then I asked Rei what she thought. And she said, I don't think it means rude. So in the end, we went with this isn't a very nice way to put it. Yeah, the Japanese definition of zatsu, there's two of them. One of them is this missile mixed in, miscellaneous, like lots of things together. And then the meaning in this sentence is omakade i kagen na sama, t e n e de nai sama. So it's like, it's hard to translate on the fly. So, like, yeah, you can say like zatsu na shigoto, which would be like a. Messy or sloppy job, or zatsuni atsukao is like a rough or crude way of dealing with someone. So, zatsu is like rough or crude, and she's saying that she's got a rough way of saying this. And the reason she prefaces with that phrase is because saying hima da kara renai shite ri yatsu ippai masu is kind of like a not very nice thing to say. Like, well, some people are just in relationships because they have nothing better to do. We have this hima da kara, so because they have lots of free time. Renai shiteru is like in relationships. Technically, renai means something like love or the love between a couple, like in the actions of being in a couple. It's kind of a hard word to translate because sometimes they translate it as love, but yeah, it's not like love for a child or something. And then this yatsu part, okay? Okay, so a lot of times I get questions from students like,、um, what is this person saying here? Because I can't catch this exact. Part of the sentence that they're saying. And I try to tell people you don't have to know every part of every sentence that a person is saying. Like, you, have, you don't have to be able to catch, like, audibly every part of every sentence a person is saying. So when I first heard this sentence, I thought that the person was saying,、uh, hito So, like, I thought they were saying right here, not yatsu, but I thought they were saying hito, person. Then I asked Rei like, what she thought it was, and she wasn't totally sure, but she thought it was Yatsu. And the reason that we're not sure is because if you listen to the audio, the person is not being clear when they talk. They're mumbling in this part of the sentence. I'll, I'll show you. You catch that? It's like right in this part right here. 
Let's play it like a bunch of times. Like maybe she's saying Yatsu, maybe she's saying I'm pretty sure she's saying Yatsu, but the 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 issue is like you don't have to be able to hear every single syllable of every sentence in order to understand what it means. So when I first heard this, I thought she was saying Hito, but they think that she's saying Yatsu, and I think that she's actually right now that I listen to it more, but doesn't matter because either way I understood the sentence because my brain was trying to fill in what I didn't catch audibly with my knowledge of Japanese to say like this is probably the word that they're putting there so you can understand it by inserting that word mentally and this is what native speakers do they do not catch every syllable that a person is saying they miss lots of them because people mumble or it's loud and you can't hear what a person is saying but you use the context and your knowledge of the language to fill in those gaps and that's how you understand things it's not by catching every single kana it's by knowing a good amount of the language and then catching as many parts of the sentence as you can and letting your brain fill in the rest because it's really good at that and it was designed to do that over millions of years while we're talking about uh, pronunciation i just i really want to mention that if you listen to the audio at the end she's saying baimasu and she really puts the uh sound into that su. so when you learn to speak japanese and you see imas normally that's going to be pronounced like imasu because if you write this in romaji it's imasu because imasu but this u part is an often an unvoiced vowel so it sounds like more like imas often but some people and it depends on personal preference and their region and just their feeling in that moment they might say imasu with it u sound and you also hear this with words like des usually um you know this is going to be sound it's going to sound like this this is going to sound like this but sometimes you'll hear someone say it and it sounds like this it just depends on the person and what they personally want to say and it can also be influenced by the region they're from like you'll hear that uh sound thrown in more often for example in kansai than you do in kanto kansai is like where you have like kyoto and osaka and kanto is like tokyo and yokohama and stuff like that so you'd hear the uh thrown in more often in kansai but that's not to say that people in kanto don't also do that sometimes because they do i feel like females do it more often than males but i have no data to back that up and they when i asked her if she thinks it sounds feminine she said no because some guys do put that uh sound in there sometimes when they feel like it anyway my translation is not entirely entirely literal because you saw she said sugoku zatsuna ikata shimasu kido. so sugoku zatsuna would seem like she's saying very rough or crude so like maybe you'd think i would translate it like as like this is a very crude way to put this but then that sounds like it's not crude because crude in english sounds like something vulgar maybe but she's just saying it's like a not nice way to put it so i went with it's it isn't a very nice way to put it and then we have this people are only in relationships because they have nothing better to do and you'll notice that, that the japanese doesn't have there's they have nothing better to do it just says hima da kara so they have free time they're bored they are not busy is and then instead of in relationships they have like literally are loving each other so having heard everything I just said, let's listen one more time and just see if maybe you can catch what's going on here. In the description of the video, I'll put a link to this podcast and I'll also write out all the sentences and words that I just showed you on the screen. I hope this was helpful. I'll see you around. This フューチャーラーニングメソッドネイティブシャークがお送りしました。